the, I think the people of, uh, of Canada, Quebec, and the world need to know that the success rate uh, in Arcanon Trobriere is not even close to uh, 70 to 76 percent, as uh, uh, Mark Bernard has said, and uh, Brad uh, Melnichuk from Abel said to uh, the government in a government hearing. Uh, part of my job in Arcanon was to, uh, to look at these calculations, and uh, I had approached Brad Melnick on one occasion about the success rate being far below 70%, and he said to me that uh, it was a concern to him too, and he was looking into it. I also told uh, Mark Bernard that I was concerned about it, and I also told Lynn Peru. I was told at that time to just move on to uh, another uh, another job that I was instructed to. Uh, when I was there, I was the uh, uh, my post was a graduate officer in charge of uh, building a foundation and also contacting uh, uh, relapsed people. And when I started contacting relapsed people, um, it was incredible how many had relapsed, and the figures started coming in uh, that it was far, far, far below. 70 uh, percent. In fact, uh, some of the figures that we were coming up with, that I was coming up with, were, uh, uh, were in the 40 percent. And uh, it's incredible how they, they do that to, to advertise, promote uh, their 70 to 76 percent success rate on the internet and uh, in brochures and on the phone to potential clients that are, uh, that are coming in. Uh, they'll state that uh, the success rate is 70 percent. So these people coming into Narconon, uh, or inquiring about Narconon, uh, have a reasonable expectation, in my view, of uh, you know, a high success rate. In fact, when, when they go in, or, or their sponsor or parents send them in, I, I believe they have a reasonable expectation of, uh, of success, at least three out of four. And it's, and it's simply untrue. Um, at one time I was told to use the worldwide stats for, uh, for Narconon. And I said, no, you can't do that because we're advertising that uh, Narconon Trois Rivières has that high success rate, which it doesn't. And even if you did take the whole world stats in, I just received uh, uh, some stats from uh, uh, Australia where their calculations were 1% off what mine are, and they didn't know what mine were. So it's very, uh, very, uh, very deceitful. So. And, uh, Students go through Narconon Trovier, and then they leave again. Uh, many relapse within one day or a week, and uh, they're they're just dumbfounded as to why. I mean, I do know why, but uh, in many cases, but uh, trying to get them back in, or and when they were trying to get back in, it is it's very very difficult. Um, I approached my superior once, uh, Andre Ahern about bringing uh, relapses back in. And he says, well, we don't want to bring in uh, more than uh, five. And I said, uh, okay, five a week? And he said, no, five here at, at a time. Uh, it does influence the students that are there uh, that have paid the 23000 when they see a lot of relapses coming in because they feel like this isn't working. It's not going to work. There's too many relapses here. So they contact their parents or sponsors and they start to wonder and get nervous. So not only uh, do they hesitate to bring people back in uh, because they've relapsed uh, for financial reasons, because you only pay uh, half the price to come back in for a relapse, uh, which some people have come back in three times. Um, it's a PR thing where um, they need to keep, keep the status quo of 70 to 76% uh, success rate. Uh, can I prove that it's below 70%? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, discussed it with uh, one government official and uh, we're just waiting for some more surveys to come in and uh, once that's done um, I think uh, Narconon and Scientology is going to be um, there's going to be a rude awakening and uh, I think the, the misrepresentation which I received from one government official I think even further than that I think it needs to go to the competition bureau and to high levels of government I have spoken to high levels of government and assured them that uh, uh, when it does go to a hearing or court, that absolutely I'll testify. And others are starting to come forward now uh, since the, uh, uh, Mark uh, Allard did that piece. And uh, they're not quite afraid anymore. And uh, they're supporting me. And uh, I think that's great. Um, I think the reason
reason why the, it's been uh, so squashed down and suppressed by Scientology and the Archonauts around the world over the last few years is because people are afraid. And uh, when you first step forward, yeah, it's pretty scary. But once you start getting support from people around the world, and uh, especially people from Anonymous, who have been unbelievable in, in supporting me. And uh, I just want to thank them all very much. And Jerry Armstrong. And, uh, and Paul Schofield. Paul Schofield's children. You know, they, uh, they met their demise at the hands of Solid Scientology. And uh, it, it's, it's very, very disturbing to me. And um, they want to take my freedom of speech away from me, my charter rights. And I walked out of Hayden, Hayden and Blakey's office last week. Uh, I wanted to see my children. I knew that was a ticket to see my children. And I walked out without the check. I went home. And I checked my email. money sent to me by PayPal, three different amounts. Now I can see my children and meet with Jerry Armstrong in Vancouver to go to the protest on the 17th. And uh, thank you, Anonymous.